haven't seen season one and you just see season two, you're in luck because the first episode of season two is a great kind of reestablishing who the characters are and uh, not a lot of story happens. It's sort of reminding you who these people are and reminding you sort of what happened in season one. So if you haven't seen season one and you don't plan to and you want to start watching season two, um, you're going to watch the show, you're going to feel like you can catch up with the story, and hopefully you're going to see a show that is uh, a really frank look at modern day li gay life in San Francisco. And the first episode, we take a trip to Russian River. Uh, the sort of three central characters take a trip to Russian River uh, and sort of get reacquainted with each other and have a really great time. So it would be a great first episode to sort of drop in with. In many ways, this is a very groundbreaking show. Um, can you comment about that? Um, it's so funny to hear the word groundbreaking because when you're making the show, you're not really thinking about what the effect that it will have on the general public. You're just trying to tell the best story and tell it as clearly and succinctly as possible. Um, and it, as the sort of actor or even the writers or people working on the show, it isn't until the world sees it that you start to see it in the view of the world. And I think one of the great things that the show has done uh, has its, there's not a lot of gay programming. So it, start, it started a lot of really interesting conversations about the representation of the gay community and if the show is doing that in a good way or a bad way or a complicated way. Um, and straight people that watch the show are learning maybe all sorts of things about the gay community. Maybe the most important thing is that people are people and relationships are relationships and there's maybe more similarities between straight relationships and gay relationships than anyone ever, than they ever expected. Um, but I think more than anything, it's, it's starting conversations, which I think is something that HBO specializes in. You have two audiences, the, there's the gay community and the GLBT audience, and then you have the straight audience. Mm -hmm. what, is, what is their usual reaction to, to, to seeing your show? From which, from like? From, from, from straight people. From straight people. It's been all sorts of things. For, it's, I, love, I love when I'm reminded when straight people stop me on the street that they're watching the show. And I think, wow, okay, so it's not just gay people watching it, which, which shouldn't be a revelation to me, but it is. Because uh, uh, the show is about gay people. But I think that because it's not about coming out stories and it's not about grappling with sexuality, it's about grappling with love and relationships and friendships. And I think it's very artfully shot, and uh, hopefully that allows people who are straight to relate to the to the uh, to the characters. Um, Patrick, your character, um, where do we drop him off in season two, and where do we pick him up? Yeah, at the end of season one, Patrick had sort of ended this his first sort of meaningful relationship with his boyfriend Richie who he met and dated during season one, and started to engage in an affair with his boss at work. And so when we pick up in season two, he's in a full-blown affair with his boss. Uh, and for the first time, he starts talking about it with his friends, which I think means that Patrick is ready to stop just being in a mindless affair and ready to start looking at what this affair is about. and if it's right for him and what it means for him and what he's getting from it and what he's not getting from it. And Richie, the, his boyfriend from season one, is also sort of on the brain and in his mind. And as the season progresses, all of that kind of comes to a head.